In this episode of Hardwood Floor TV, removing a nail down floor that's under cabinets and baseboard. Wonder how it's done? Stay tuned. In this job, all the wood floors were installed before the baseboard, door casings, and kitchen cabinets when the home was built about 10 years ago. Maybe you're wondering, why remove the floors? They look great. The homeowner decided to change all the floors in the home to a 5-inch pre-finished Brazilian cherry, with this area being the last on the list. Any large-scale floor removal project like this will be very time-consuming and messy, so the first order of the day is protecting what's inside the cabinets and drawers. Next, the tear-out begins with the circular saw set to cut about 13 sixteenths of an inch into the floors or slightly deeper than the thickness of the flooring. Several rows are cut about two feet apart. When pulling out tongue and groove nailed floors, it's easiest to remove from the tongue side of the board shown here. Looks kind of easy in the middle of the room, huh? But folks, if you're up against a solid three-quarter inch stapled floor, expect the removal time to be double and possibly longer. I can almost read his thoughts. Guys want to install floors, not spend hours removing them. Surely a head scratcher for most, how to remove this last piece that's nailed under the baseboard. Here's a neat trick. Grab some screws and drill them into the side about a foot and a half apart. By using a pry bar and something to prevent damage to the baseboard, gently pry back and the piece will begin to release. For areas that run perpendicular to the baseboard, it's much easier. No explanation needed. Now that the big areas are nearly completely removed, it's time for the tedious stuff in the kitchen. Here's the real bugger. How to get the hardwood out from under the cabinets? Or should we? Thankfully, there's a nifty tool called the toe kick saw to do the job. But folks, this tool can be alarmingly dangerous. Use extreme care. Better yet, call in somebody else to do the work. A sawzall can be used, but that too is dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Have I mentioned calling in somebody else to do this work? This tool does work great, but cutting through 3 quarter inch hardwood is a big workout, and it can't get all the way into the corners. Here a multi-function tool is brought in to finish them off. Once all the perimeter cuts have been made under the cabinets, more sections are cut. But the circular saw can't get under the toe kick or to the baseboard under the refrigerator. Here's the sawzall brought in to finish the cuts. Carefully. You might want to call somebody in on this one too. On removal of the underlayment, you'll find quite a few nails that remain. It's better to pull the nails after each section is completed for safety reasons and so you know they're gone. Finally, a clean sweep and you're ready to think about starting the installation. Here's that toe kick area we worked on previously. Yep, that tool does do a great job, but it's no wonder why nobody rents them. Ugh, that toe kick thingy jigger really gives me the willies just looking at it. If you're daring enough, lick the top link for more. <laughs> lick the link? Oh, you know what I mean. Click the link. Second link shows a cool video on lacing in new boards on repair jobs. And, and, and remove and replace boards at the last link. So what do they call it a toe kick? So you don't stub your toes. That makes no sense to me at all.